if you're like me or any other producer at one point in time you probably complicated your drums you either felt like they were a, a little too stale or b you were doing way too much so to help you save some time and bypass all of that there's four easy producer tips that i wish i knew earlier about drums number one instead of using crashes try using textures and boxes to give a harder impact here's an example of what i mean Now, when I say use textures and voxes as crashes, this is exactly what I mean. These sounds right here are textures from the sample. If I take it out, the drop doesn't feel as impactful. That's cool, but the textures really give it a different type of feel. You don't always need to use like crashes or cymbals or risers. Lately, what I've been using is textures and boxes and boxes from like animes. So when it comes to textures, like you could use like pretty much anything. Like I got three different ones right here. Then this is the second one. The first two were in the stems and I just cut them out and then I added this third one just to give it a different sound. Let me show you another beat, probably one that I played on here before. I actually pitched it down, but it sounds like this originally. That's like a weird sound, but it's a vox. It's somebody saying, ooh, Hey, you gotta respect the sound designers. By now, I think you get the drift. Let's move on to the second one. The second thing that I wish I knew earlier was being picky with my drum sounds. Yes, sound selection is important, meaning not everybody can go where you're trying to go. <laughs> so listen to this drum pattern. Yeah, I'm not gonna hold you. This shit look like a lot's going on, but I promise you, it's not. It's actually fairly simple. I started off with this. And then just added these perks. Now that's all percussion playing like simple rhythms. What I'll pretty much do is I'll play a beat and then I'll just go and search through the drum sound. And just try to find the things that pop out to me first. Now, originally I was using this kick. Now you tell me if this sounds right. I didn't really like it like that. I felt like it'd probably be for like some reggaeton stuff. A big thing is if you have to second guess or you feel like, mm, I don't know, maybe just change it. Cause if you're already thinking like that, then that means something's already off. So I found this other kick, which I tend to use a lot. It's from Francis Got Heat, which is in the same pack as this Malay kick. And this is what it sounds like. It just felt right. You hear how that feels right and it all gels together? That's how I know that's the right kick. And also, I know these are all the right sounds because none of these are in the mixer. It sounded hard to me. I like where it's at. I don't have no second guessing and I don't have to do any additional mixing because the sounds are good. So I'm rolling with that. No need to overcomplicate. Oh, this next one is super crucial because some people need to hear this. The third thing that I wish I knew earlier was you don't have to do too much. I feel like people really underestimate a good two to four bar groove because you can really get detailed in the arrangement and make that simple pattern sound pretty good. Here's a good example. I should low-key start playing these from scratch beats. But anyway, that's not the point though. The point is these drums, hella simple, but very effective. Now, outside of the melody, this is the main thing that people are gonna latch onto.
Call it simple, call it basic, but it's effective. The 808 pattern with the melody. And then when the kick comes in, a snare is introduced. All right, so by now you probably get the gist of this beat. Here's another beat that I feel is pretty simple, but it works though. It's hard. <laughs> it's a simple beat, but it has its little moments in the arrangement to make it sound interesting and keep the listener engaged. It just gives more anticipation for not only when the drop comes and the kick comes, but when the artist like says what he says and then it just drops right there because he might say some heavy shit, you know what I mean? Like who knows? Or he might say something like super like, you know, swaggy, you know? Who knows? I think I use like one or two sounds from the collection that's available to you guys on Splice. It's actually my collection. Uh, it's just a collection of like high quality sounds that I always update and it's available to you guys. So if you guys need to find like high quality punchy sounds or go-to sounds, definitely use the link down below to download them. Now I say this last one because they say save the best for last, but this one is super crucial. This one made me think about things a lot differently. Number four, use acapellas to get better at your drum programming. Yeah, uh, I'm a Christian Dior shirt rocker, two Glock wearer, only rapper that would have thrived in a Tupac era. I'm talking 98 drug money, shoebox era. I prove my point once and every take the proof got clearer. That niggas make threats, we pay killers and take bets. I heard this Benny the Butcher song produced by Hit Boy. Triple black tents on the caddy. What you know about being out in the valley to plug action for Addy? And I was like, man, it'll go perfect for this one melody because it feels like some like like mafia type of shit. So I heard this melody from the homie Nami. <laughs> Once I heard it again, it reminded me of like a scene from like a mafia movie. And in my head, I kept hearing Benny the Butcher's voice because he has this like certain type of texture and grittiness to his voice. And he could say stuff that other people cannot because obviously it's his lifestyle. He really lives that type of stuff. But I heard that. I'm like, man, this would be perfect. It gave me direction for the drums. The reason why I say using an acapella helps you get better with your drums is because you can treat it like an exercise. It helps you get better with your arrangement as well as your drum patterns, as well as your transitions. And on top of that, it scratches that creative itch. Like for me, I have fun making remixes because it allows me to go different directions than the original song that's already out. You can get acapellas from a ton of different places. I even put out a short on the channel which shows you guys how to make an acapella with any song using Isotopes' RX-9. I'm pretty sure they'll have the link up somewhere, but Isotopes Isotope RX-9 is available on Spices Rent to Own. So if you guys do want that, definitely check the link down below and sign up for that today. So that concludes the video. These are a couple things that help me get better at my drums. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys take these tips and apply them. And I hope it gives you guys a spark of creativity. So I don't know if you're going through a creative block or you just want something to help you level up. I do hope this video helped you guys out. A lot of people reached out to me and wanted a drum video. So I'm glad I could bring it to life and help you guys. So remember, like, comment, subscribe, and let me know down in the comments what else you guys want to see. And I'll be sure to make a video on it. So with that being said, I will catch you guys next time. Hope you guys have a great day.